to the Fantasy Source Baseball Podcast. My name is David A. Arnott, I'm sitting here with Matt Litovsky, and today, prompted by the ascension to the major leagues of a former top draft pick, Andrew Miller, that I guess start for the Red Sox, at least one start, contractually obligated, otherwise he'd have to be let go. The big lefty sits what sits out of North Carolina, can only seem to get lefties out, hasn't been able to get those pesky righties out though, and there are a few of those in Major League Baseball. Pro baseball, in fact, all have a lot of righties. That's always been a problem. But even with that, they've decided to give him a shot. And the the rumor going around is that the Red Sox may actually stick with a six-man rotation for a little bit longer than you might think. Yeah, and we saw the White Sox do that earlier this year and might do it again. Jake Peavy's going to make a, a rehab start tonight in Charlotte, and they think he'll probably make another one, and then he'll be back up. So I guess the question kind of is, or we've kind of been talking about this, is this, gonna, is this something we're going to see more of? Are there going to be more six-man rotations? And if so, how does that affect fantasy owners? Well, well, I mean, first thing I can think of is weekly lead managers start losing their minds yeah. because now your odds of getting a two-star week are going down mm-hmm. just with those particular guys, uh, considering you generally only have six games in a week to begin with. Right. And then the second thing I think is, you know, even, da- even daily lead managers aren't so happy because instead of getting... From here on out, you might have totaled 32 starts. Now you're talking about 29 starts out of your guy. Right. That's the bottom line is obviously if more teams do this, it's less starts to go around. Uh, I don't think more teams will do this, though, because I don't think most teams have five good pitchers, let alone six. I mean, remember the days when the the Yankees had Sterling Hitchcock was their sixth starter, and he was like a run-of-the-mill NL starter to probably totally lead average, probably could have been totally lead average for the Yankees. But they just kept him around, pitched him out of the bullpen, right. you know, spot start here and there. But you look at a lot of teams, and, and there are some that have, have, you know, five or six decent enough starters, you know, even if they had to dip into the minors. But a, there's a lot of teams that are struggling to put five on the field right now that are halfway decent, and especially when injuries kick in, which they always do. Uh, you know, it's tough, and it's tough for teams to commit one out of every six starts to a guy who they almost know for sure is going to get knocked around, and that puts a strain on their bullpen, too. Well, let's just think about this for a moment. We talked about the Red Sox. We talked about the White Sox. The only other team I can think of off the top of my head that might have the depth, and they may not even have the willpower to do it, but might have the depth to do it, are the San Francisco Giants right. when they get Barry Zito, Zito back because Ryan Vogelson has, I don't know, swallowed magical right. unicorn pitsy dust. I mean, the Phillies could probably do it if they wanted to start Worley or when they get Blanton back. But, I mean, Kyle Kendrick's not that good. so. And, that, and yeah. you know what? The Phillies are a fantastic reason why you don't do it. Well, because they're the other reason you go the opposite way and do yes. a four-man rotation. Yes, exactly. Yes. I mean, do, would you rather have Roy Holiday and Cole Hamels pitching more six and seven inning starts than seven and eight inning starts, right. for instance, and go with your bullpen the rest of the way? Right. I mean, that's the thing, and I think, you know, it it almost seems like we're destined to have it go one way or another. Like, someone's going to come along and say, we're going four-man all the way, or someone's going to say, we're going six-man all the way. Unless the five-man is the way that it's been optimized for a reason. Right. And that's the question, and what's best. I still feel a team like the Pirates or the Royals or someone says, we have to try something. Well, well, historically, how's how's it been working out? Like, what... Are, do the results say anything about whether or not you should go to a, a six-man rotation? Well, I did I did this about a month ago, prompted by the White Sox making their switch and all the rainouts, and I looked at guys who have had six days rest or more. And in this decade, the ERA for over the season, uh, each season, uh, it's it's been higher virtually every single year when guys have six days rest than just the overall starter ERA, which surprised me. You, you'd almost think it would be the opposite. But I think when you disrupt rhythm, these guys, you know, Major League pitchers are very finicky about their rhythm. This is what they like to do. They have their throw day this day, and they do this on this day. And you disrupt their rhythm, I don't think that's a good thing. Now, obviously, if it was a regular thing that they were preparing for all offseason, they could probably find that rhythm then. But I think, like, an immediate switch I don't think is a great idea for some of these pitchers. Well, I, I think also my first thought when I looked at that list, which you just pulled out, is that... You know, the reason why in 2010, you know, starters on six days rest had a 4.33 ERA as opposed Mm -hmm. to all starters having a 4.15 is that who are those sixth pitchers? 
They're guys who normally wouldn't be pitching at the major well, league level for but that these, team, right? No, these aren't six starters. These are just any pitcher who's, who has six or more days rest. Right, I just figured they're right. diluting the pool. Right. Well, it's possible. I mean, but it's like you look, I mean, if Roy Halladay could, you know, if there's a rain out right. and he gets an extra day rest, right. he would be included on this. But, it, yeah, it is interesting to look at. It's tough to figure why. And I also, this was, about, again, about a month ago I wrote this in Inside Pitch. But some of the pitchers, the best on, on six days rest are the worst. And there's good names. Like, Wandy Rodriguez, 5.64 ERA in his career on six days rest. Um, or actually, since 05. You know, a guy like uh, Scott Baker is pretty good, 4.99. Jorge De La Rosa, 4.96. You know, that's well above or worse than what their normal ERAs are. So, it's a bit of the unknown when you go into it. And on... For certain guys, I think it'd be a great thing. Like, I think for Jake Peavy and the White Sox, it'd be great because getting extra rest for him is a good thing since he has so many injury problems. But for other guys, it's probably not. Yeah, I mean, the Giants would be a prime example. Like, why why would the Giants need or want to do that with guys who are, A, in the primes of their careers, like right. Kane and Lincecum? And I guess, you, I guess Madison Bumgarner is not through the injury nets this yet. But those guys are in the primes of their careers. You kind of want to match out their, match them out. And if you're going to go to a six-man rotation, you do something like alternating starts, I yeah. guess. There's got to be something, and I just think it will be interesting if the Red Sox do this and if they stick with it to see how that affects you. Know, you look, talk about guys on a roll, Josh Beckett, I mean, is in total rhythm. And just see how that affects these guys. We'll see if the White Sox do it again. Because if they're successful, make no mistake, teams will copy them. So so which way are you leaning your suspicions towards how fantasy managers ought to approach, say, the Red Sox in the next week or two while they've got that six-man rotation? Well, I think for them, I mean, obviously, if you have Beckett, you have Pride Buckholz, too. You're, just, you're pitching them like you normally would and hoping for the best. But it, it's something to watch for. And I think to hope for, you hope it doesn't stick. Just for the simple fact that it's less... Less starts, and for the simple fact that the numbers say, eh, it's probably not a great thing. Obviously, individuals could be different than league-wide trends. But overall, I, I don't think it'll stick because I don't think most teams have enough good starters. And I, I don't. it's definitely not a good thing for fantasy owners, I would say. And Andrew Miller specifically? And Andrew Miller is whatever. I don't know. <laughs> hey, he's, he's worth a flyer in AL-only leagues. Why not? But, Especially keeper leagues? Well, he's never had success in no. the majors, so I just... I don't want to give up on a guy, but I'm giving up on him. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thanks for joining us. All right.